Hey guys, Queer of the Lazy Geek here. I apologize today for the lack of light. Uh, it's simply, I'm going to do some uh, polar alignment. And if I were to use my balcony light as usual, it would get into the telescope that I want to use for polar alignment and things would get bad very quickly. So yes, as you've heard today, we're going to do polar alignment. Uh, and we're going to use sharp cap for the moment. There is a polar alignment feature in Nina, but I have yet to use it. And uh, sharp cap is very convenient. And f if anyone does not know about sharp cap for polar, polar alignment, you'll see how, it is, how easy it is to use sharp cap to get precise polar alignment in a matter of minutes. And I just love that program. Um, so uh, let's get uh, started. First things first, sharp cap. Is, uh, has this polar alignment feature only in the pro version of SharpCap. And I would say that is its main disadvantage. And the pro version of SharpCap is not something you buy a license and then you're done with it. You have to, uh, it's recurring. So you have to pay something like $10 a year, which you know, compared with the rest of the e equipment cost is low, but it's still like a recurring fee. And personally, I'm not a fan of recurring fees. Uh, but I understand it. Uh, so, and it's up to the, to the guy who made the software, Robin Glover. So, you know, uh, his, uh, his software, his rules. And so, uh, but, and also it's excellent software. So, uh, so you know, I, I just uh, couldn't not buy it because this polar alignment feature, as we'll see, is absolutely excellent. So obviously, you know, or, you know, you, you may not know, or you may or may not know that in most um, equatorial mounts that you're going to buy, there is actually um, within the uh, RA axis, so the uh, axis that's supposed to point to the celestial pole, there is a little tiny cute telescope that is uh, being used to, that has some um, writing in it. You can look through it and you'll see some um, coordinates or some circle or something like that that basically tells you where you should be centering or where you should be placing some stars like Polaris in the northern hemisphere to achieve perfect polar alignment. But of course where you should be placing Polaris in your poroscope actually depends on the time of the night as well as the, your, the day uh, because Polaris is not exactly at the celestial pole, so it actually rotates around the celestial pole. It's ro roughly, I think, uh, one degree away, something like that, and it rotates around that pole uh, once a day, just like everything else, every other star. Uh, so that's why it's, it gets a bit complicated, and you need to be down on your knee. You need to make sure that uh, the counterweight shaft or the, the shaft that is within the declination axis is not blocking your view of for, for that polar scope it, and then it's it's painful i don't like it and it takes a lot of time and especially if you're like um you're on you're on grass that's wet it's not pleasant to kneel on in wet grass or if you're using a mount that does not have a guide scope then obviously it's going to be a problem and so the solution to that in recent years have been things like a product called a pole master I believe, which is a, a, a basically an electronic guide scope that you put uh, at the end, at the, the the tip of the RA axis, really, and then you use software to center that, and that has the advantage of being a one-time buy, uh, but it requires additional hardware. Another thing is you can simply use SharpCap along with your guide scope here on the top, because SharpCap will actually require a fairly wide field uh, for the object. If you have a fairly wide field already, like uh, a very short refractor, as your main Im imaging scope, you can use your uh, main imaging scope. Uh, but I will use my uh, guide scope. Uh, if it doesn't work, I have another scope, uh, a 200 millimeter lens with uh, a different camera that has a wider field of view. So let's get started. Okay, and here we are. I have SharpCap opened. And what we're going to go, do is go, just go into cameras and I'm going to connect my guide camera. And hopefully the light from my house is not interfering too much. We can see stars. So that's a good first step. And then I'm going to go into tools and uh, polar align. And this will only work, by the way, if you have visibility towards Polaris, if you are towards your celestial pole. If you do not have visibility towards your celestial pole, you will have, you will not be able to use uh, this sharp, path, sharp cap methodology. 
And uh, I clicked on OK. And then the first thing is we're going to do, we're just follow, going to follow the wizard of sharp cap. So first, it will take an image and will attempt to solve it. And you can see right now, it's not really managing to solve it. It seems like there's too much noise in the image. It picks up too much uh, noise as a star. So I'm going to lower my gain so that uh, things can be a bit easier. At the same time, I'm going to increase my exposure time. And I also increased my noise reduction here. And I think like normally I don't have this issue. I think it's because of the light from my house, which I'm, I'm leaving on. So you can have kind of a look at how uh, I look at, I, I look like. Okay, so we've solved one frame. And I think we're going to be quite far off because I really messed with this mount a lot recently. And we're going to press the next because we have most recent frame is solved. So SharpCap knows where it is pointed to. I'm going to click on next. And now it tells me now rotate your mount through about 90 degrees about the RA axis. So for that, I'm just, I could do it manually, but I'll just do it without touching the mount. I'll just, you know, Maybe I'll go on the eastern side so I'm not blocking the view. And I'm just rotating my mouse using, using my mount commands as you know usual to get uh, the, uh, the telescope pointed towards the north celestial pole still, but uh, at a different angle. And let's stop that. Let's see whether SharpCap can actually solve that new image. And it told me it solved it. And you can see that I have a polar alignment error that is visible of roughly four arc minutes. Four arc minutes doesn't sound too bad. And it is not too bad, but it is not great either. We can do better. So now you can see me here. And I'm here so that I can show you uh, what I am actually going to do. Um, I am going to use the knobs on the side of the mount uh, here and there, and then knobs that are here as well to basically adjust the axis, um, horizontal and vertical axis to point it exactly to the north uh, celestial pole. And um, I see that SharpCap is having a lot of issues solving the frame, but hopefully everything's going to be okay. One of the reasons is because I'm here, I'm making the telescope vibrate on my roof balcony. This is something else as well, because I'm on the roof balcony, simply my being here actually alters the ground a little bit. And that means that even if I get perfect polar alignment while I'm here, um, once I've actually uh, left the balcony, that polar alignment will have slightly shifted. So that's one of the uh, um, too bad kind of things. Now, uh, we can see that I want to click on the next button first. And now we are being told by SharpCap whether we should move the mount left or right or up or down. And so we're going to move it left a little bit by adjusting the knobs here on the side of the mount. And the next time it solves the frame, which hopefully it does, I might increase the exposure time a little bit. I think there's some clouds as well. So I went in the wrong direction, apparently. Silly me. Okay, so it's actually a very small adjustment that's necessary. You can see from, you can also see on the screen, there is a little yellow arrow. It tells me like the star should be moved to the little square next to it. So that's another way of looking. So there's the left and up kind of instructions that we have here. We also have where should the star be placed? And you know, the smoother the mount has um, those adjustment screws, the easier it will be to set. So now we're almost done on the uh, horizontal kind of uh, axis. We can try the, uh, the other axis and see what happens after I tighten a little bit from the uh, bottom end of, of the scope. And now I went too far up, so I need to go down again. <laughs> it's always. It's like that, that mount in particular, I find it like kind of difficult to handle when doing polar alignment, but we're getting closer. So now we want to go up a little bit again, and we'll still want to go right as well. 
and uh, after I've touched it I wait until the frame solves again and we still want to go up and then somehow I've put it um, like I've, I've moved it laterally a little bit and I, that was probably too much it's really hard to do precision adjustments on the EQ6R so now we're getting a do not solve so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the light and just finish this, uh, this alignment immediately everything is easier without the light so it was really the light was causing issues there and finally we're here I see an excellent polar alignment which will likely move to being a decent polar alignment once I move away from the scope okay I'm away from the scope and it's still excellent so that's a good thing which means that now my polar alignment is dialed in and that's pretty much it that's how easy it is to do a uh, polar alignment in sharp cap and now I'm done I'm just closing sharp cap I'm parking my telescope and I'm actually going to uh, try to image uh, probably around again the um, the Seder Seder area next to the Cygnus wall so probably around M29 here or maybe this uh, butterfly nebula and see what that uh, gives me on my side-by-side -side setup and so that was it for polar alignment using sharp cap for today so what's very good also about sharp cap is that it will also include like take into account what is called the Kuhn error which is caused by the fact that your telescope uh, it's probably not pointing at in exactly the same direction as the axis of your telescope and so uh, that little error can cause uh, issues um, but SharpCap actually takes it into account and computes it as part of the 90 degrees rotation that you have to do on the RA axis to do uh, the polar alignment and that's pretty much it I hope this was uh, useful um, I'm, I'm quite a happy that I managed to get such a good uh, polar alignment uh, to get it to excellent even though those uh, knobs on the EQ6R are quite coarse uh, but anyway that's uh, that's really neat and thank you so much for watching if you like this video please click like please leave a comment down below and also if you're not subscribed please click on the subscribe button or if you want to and then click the notification bell to uh, to be informed when there's a new video coming so thank you so much for watching uh, don't forget to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time